We live in a world where it's easy to forget about the whales. But forget about them or not, they continue to swim in the ocean from the polar to the equatorial regions, just as they have done for the past tens of millions of years. Early last year, an event occurred, and I'd like to share a shortened version of it with you. I think it will serve as a really good introduction to the great whales and to myself. And afterwards, we'll take a look at the biggest animals that have ever lived on our planet. Enjoy. I came upon a young humpback whale that appeared to be dead. I decided to ease into the water with my snorkeling gear in order to assess the situation. I quickly discovered the whale was severely entangled in a gill net of the type used by local fishermen. As I swam alongside the animal, our eyes met. There were no words we could share, but I wanted to let the whale know that we were there to help. It took some effort to stay focused given the great emotion of the moment. The situation was indeed bleak. The tail was entangled in so much gear it was weighted down a full 15 feet below the surface. Both pectoral fins were pinned to the side of its body and the nylon gill net went all the way up the whale's back forward of the dorsal fin. While I was working around the pectoral fin, my boatmates George and Wero had managed to get some of the net pulled over the side of our ponga. I came back aboard and we pulled and cut the net as fast as we could. And when the whale tired, we began cutting the net off the powerful tail fluke. I think you might need to cut it and let her go with it. Finally, Probably after about an hour of exhausting work, we decided we had enough net aboard to make the final cut. We were hoping enough net was off the fluke to free her. The call is free. The tail is free. Okay, cut. 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 She slowly swam away, but about 500 feet from our boat, she breached high into the air. Free to live life. Yeah. Yay! Yeah! Yay! For the next hour, she provided us with an incredible full surface display. We saw at least 40 breaches, as well as tail lobs, tail slaps, and pectoral fin slaps. We all believed it was at least a show of pure joy, if not thanks. She's, mommy, I know what she's doing. What is she doing, She's hun? showing us that she's all free. Yeah. yeah. I think she's I think so, so Galen. We followed her for about four miles over the next hour and said goodbye. Last year, in, on Valentine's Day, um, I actually found an entangled young humpback whale in the Sea of Cortez off the coast of Mexico, and um, off the coast of Baja, California. And there was a very difficult decision to make, but we decided that we were going to try to save this whale's life. This whale had no chance to survive without intervention. It was a remote area, and the entanglement was so severe that the whale would have died. It barely could breathe. And over 9 million people have watched that video in the last year and a half. We're still getting about seven to 10,000 views per day. 
So this is uh, the signature of all humpback whales. Um, they have a unique pattern of pigmentation on the bottom side of their tail or fluke that they keep for life. This is Valentina's. Uh, it's her photo identification. And I bring it on the water with me every time I go out. So if I meet her again, I will know. This is Valentina jumping clear of the water. And um, this is right after we freed her. She jumped absolutely out of the water. And if you look very carefully at her left pectoral fin, that's on the right side of her body, her left fin, there's a little bit of net left on, but not really enough to, to worry her. She was fine. An adult blue whale is far more massive than the biggest dinosaur ever was. Their heart is the size of a small automobile. And their tongue, I can't really see many of you, but everybody wiggle your tongue real quickly. Now imagine that you're wiggling a 1,000 pound tongue. Their bodies are so massive that they could easily crush any small or medium sized boat. And believe me, blue whales and boats come near each other every day, many times in this world. Yet never has there been any record of a blue whale harming a human being. Think about that. Never. Blue whales are identified also by a unique pattern of pigmentation they have on the sides of their body. This is the right side of a blue whale. Here's the dorsal fin. This is the mountains. This is the Sea of Cortez, Baja, California. And all this light and dark pigmentation on the right side, the animal is swimming that way. This individual will keep for her whole life. If we were out on the water and took a picture of her on the right side in 40 years, we'd be able to match it up and recognize her. The 18 to 20 foot wide tail fluke of a blue whale periodically has some bold pigmentation as well. This is an individual called White Eyes, and I've been fortunate enough to be acquainted with White Eyes since 1997. If you want to see me go nuts on the water, all you have to do is be on the water with me when this happens. When we see a mother and a baby or a cow-calf blue whale, that means a new life. And everybody always jumps for joy and screams and goes nuts when we see a cow-calf blue whale. Look at the difference between the massive cow in the background and the calf in the foreground. But don't be fooled because the calves are born at 22 to 25 feet. They gain over 200 pounds per day or a ton every nine and a half days from nursing the world's richest milk. They nurse for seven months and after they're weaned, they stay in close physical proximity to their moms for a number of months beyond that. So, how have we treated these gentle giants? Well, 200 years ago, there were about 350,000 blue whales swimming the seven seas of the world. Today, there's far less. Whalers finally discovered how to kill blue whales. It wasn't easy for them, but when they figured it out, the slaughter commenced. And 98 to 99 percent of the world's blue whales were gone. Today, they are a very endangered species, but they're still here with us. There's about 10,000 of them left in the world in genetically poor remnant island populations scattered throughout the globe. I'm lucky enough to see a lot of them and work with them. Let's take a quick peek at some of the other giants of the world. The largest land animal, the elephant. Family-oriented, intelligent animals, but unfortunately for them, they have ivory tusks and they've suffered greatly. Our closest cousins are the great apes. The giant of the great apes is the gorilla. The gorillas are hanging in there and probably mostly because many of them live in very, very remote regions where they just don't come in contact with humans. In fact, if we looked at a chart of blue whales, elephants, and gorillas, the true giants of the animal kingdom, we would see a very similar pattern over the last couple of hundred years. We'd see a line in the upper left-hand corner from 200 years ago, and the present in the lower right, and that line would be plunging downward. And today, when it met today, it would be a little bit up above the bottom of the chart, but not much. 
It makes me wonder what the tipping points are for these animals. Well, I decided to try to do something about it. Not an easy task. So two years ago, I formed a nonprofit organization called the Great Whale Conservancy, dedicated to teaching people about the existence and the plight of the world's great whales, but with special emphasis on the blue whale. But how do you get change without getting people engaged? They need to know what a blue whale is, what it looks like, how awe-inspiring it is. Well, here's our leading lady. We built an 85-foot inflatable blue whale. This is a known female. It was a titanic effort, and we built her to the exact specifications of a blue whale. You can see my seven-year-old son tethering her at an event in Southern California a couple of months ago. The beauty of this whale is that after this event, we can pack her up, throw her into the back of that van, and we can go to a huge parade or a fair or a festival where there's literally thousands, if not tens of thousands of people that on the same day can all really see what a blue whale looks like even if they don't live near the ocean, such as us in Asheville. And they can learn about you know, the existence of these animals and the plight and the status of them. There is no question about the beauty of a blue whale. Here's a 20-foot fluke with a waterfall falling off it, normal when blue whales die. Their ability to inspire awe in humans is absolutely secure. Earlier this year, I worked with an Academy Award-winning theatrical documentary film crew in the Sea of Cortez off Mexico's famed Baja Peninsula. We were all there to film Blue Whales for their upcoming movie, which is due out in 2014. Well, we had some pretty fancy gadgets with us, and one of them was a remote helicopter with a high-definition video camera underneath it that was used to film Blue Whales. So it was incredible because the whales totally did not react to the helicopter at all. I was sort of wondering about that. They were sort of in their own world, you know, these quarter of a million pound animals lumbering through the water. And we had some really, really good success. So here's a little shot from the copter. Check this out. There's some rare footage here that people, humans, have hardly ever seen. Watch this carefully here. Watch these blowholes work. This is unique stuff. I'm so glad that you got to see that because <laughs> it changes everything for me because now at least you've seen a blue whale. They are huge, they're massive, and they are incredibly beautiful. So now that we've seen all of this, why does it matter? Why do they matter? And is it in the interest of us, us humans really to preserve the lives of blue whales in our oceans. Consider this for a minute. It's a little bit, you have to pay attention here, but consider this. 30 to 40% of the CO2 emissions from the burning of fossil fuels quite literally dissolve into the oceans via the process of photosynthesis, not only in the forests, tiny microscopic phytoplankton in swarms so massive, pay attention, that occasionally they can be seen from outer space with the naked eye are the drivers of this process. I, for one, would not want to feel the effects of global warming without this process. 50% and by some accounts even a little bit more of all of the air that we breathe comes to us as a result of this oceanic process being healthy. I'm amazed that more people don't know this. Now there's a little bit more. Tiny copepods, which is a type of zooplankton, 
These are animals, little animals, as opposed to the phytoplankton, which are algae plant-like. They voraciously feed on these swarms of phytoplankton. And they, in turn, are the primary food source for krill. Krill, the only food that blue whales eat. They are specific feeders of krill. If the blue whales do not have sufficient quantities of food to eat, then all of us will not have sufficient quantities of air to breathe. So we must preserve the lives of the blue whales to preserve our lives. The great whales and I thank you very much. <laughs>